Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, ah, you were crouching. This is Carlos, a blind gamer who uses the game's sound design to listen to his opponent's movements and fight them. And because you're my friend. <laughs> and that's me, getting my ass kicked. My name is Joseph, and I'm a filmmaker, also a bit of a gamer. <laughs> I wouldn't say that I'm a gaming expert, but I do play video games every day, even if it's just on my phone. And I know that I'm not the only one, because video games have grown to be one of the most popular forms of media in the whole world. In 2021, there were roughly 227 million gamers in the United States, which means odds are you're probably a gamer too. From Mario to Call of Duty, I believe that there's a game out there for everybody. But my ability to play every video game, it's definitely something I've taken for granted. And then I met Carlos Vasquez. You see, the accessibility movement in gaming has heated up in recent years, allowing players like Carlos, who is completely blind, to effortlessly pummel his enemies. This video is about a community of disabled gamers who are pushing the limits of video games. Carlos is a gamer from Texas who's competed at EVO. That's one of the largest fighting game tournaments in the world. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. He's also the drummer in a gnarly metal band. Carlos is able to play fighting games because of accessible settings and design features like sound cues. But I'll let him explain. I remember my brother uh, got uh, the Nintendo 64. They say it was for both of us, but I, you know, at the time I was like, well, how would I play, right? So it kind of felt like an outsider. Once you realize that there's a platform that only moves from left to right and the characters are sort of farming in that 2D environment, that all you gotta do is just learn the buttons. So I would just basically sit down and listen to my brother play, you know, and kind of get familiar with the sounds. Cause at that point, you know, I could still see the screen, but just know that it was like a square shape, but I couldn't see what was coming through. I could see flashes of light. So I just started realizing that the game design, you know, has certain sounds. So if a character gets hit, you know, there's a grunt to it. And if they're getting hit, let's say with the staff or a sword or whatever, you can hear the slicing, the banging of metal against the person, or, you know, there's all these little, like, little details. So basically there's a specific sound effect for anything that happens in the game? Exactly. Carlos is not someone you want to encounter in Mortal Kombat. So you say you want to do a match, right? You want to do a quick match? Yeah, let's do it. My palms are sweaty. <laughs> Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> okay. Woo. Carlos uses a stereo headset to hear which side of the screen I'm on. When I move to his left, he hears me out of his left ear. There's like nothing I can do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sensing a theme, Carlos, who really like the violence of Mortal Kombat and the heaviness of metal music. <laughs> We'd like to welcome you to a stream dedicated to merging blind and sighted players. We hope you enjoy your stay. Thanks for tuning in. Rattlehead will start soon. Yo, what is up, stream? It's Rattlehead coming at you guys on another evening of streaming. Carlos is part of a community of blind gamers that chats on Discord and hangs out on the streaming platform Twitch. I got into streaming because I wanted to showcase skill actually. Like here's this blind player who's putting all this work, but I didn't want it to also be like, oh, look, I can play, I'm blind or whatever, just focus too much on my disability, right? I wanted to be more like, hey, I can hold my own against these top players. I'll make them forget that I'm visually impaired. Could you tell me about the community that you're part of on Twitch? You know, a lot of them would hit me offline, you know, and I even had players that would come and tell me like, even their disability, you know, they would tell me like, I didn't want to discuss it or I want to keep it on, you know, secret, but I see how you go about it. It built like that. And then now with Discord, we sort of created an entire 
uh, like community uh, server. It's called Blind Gamers Hub. And it doesn't matter if you're blind or not. We try to build just a community of players. Your eyes betray you. Carlos found a way to give back to his community by creating his own tournament made specifically for blind players. The Cento Showdown. What is that? The Cento Showdown. Ah, <laughs> it's a organized tournament specifically for players who are blind or visually impaired who are fans of Mortal Kombat. They give them the chance to be in the tournament setting. How'd you come up with that name? So there's this character named Kenshi in Mortal Kombat. He's a blind character and he wields this sword called Cento which guides them through, through and throughout his fights. That's really cool. Yeah, so now we call it the Cento Showdown. Carlos, you're one of the nicest people I've ever met. <laughs> right on, dude. I really try, you know, so it's like, you know, it's just, you know I guess I, I felt what it's like not having friends, you know, with, because of my disability. And I, I feel like, you know, it, people shouldn't have to go through that, you know. Before I met Carlos, I used to think that accessible settings in video games were just made for players with disabilities. Surveys estimate that roughly 15 to 20% of the population identifies as disabled. However, accessibility, it's not just for those with profound disabilities. Accessibility is universal. Like parents using subtitles while their newborn sleeps, or people watching TV in a noisy bar. Even features that were specifically designed for disabled players are used by non-disabled players too. Do you know any sighted players that use sound cues like you do? Now I do. I, I, if you were to ask me this question, like, I don't know, five years ago, I would tell you no. Right. They said some of them implemented that themselves, you know, where it's like, you know what? I can't even play with sound off anymore. The sound does help me improve my gameplay. So you're like teaching them how to play like you guys play. Yeah, because we tell them, get yourself some good headphones and turn off your monitor. How does that make you feel that sighted players are asking for your help? <laughs> it's I never thought it'd be, it, it would turn around like that, you know, because it was always us asking for help, you know. So it, it feels great, you know, to kind of have that shift of momentum, you know. After Carlos competed at pro gaming tournaments, the creators of Mortal Kombat approached him and they asked, how can we make our game even better? What happened with Netherrealm Studios they made it where you can now interact with those objects. Mm -hmm. So they call it interactable in interactables. That's what they call them. Like here, for example. So when you're near it, you see? <laughs> I get thrown so far. Here's the thing though, as a, as a player who's blind, how would I know if I'm near an interactable, you know, that I can use on the stage? You know, there's no way to do that. So Carlos asked them to create a sound cue that would ping whenever he got close to an interactable object. I was now aware of like objects around the stage that were usable during the fight, you know? So they added that to the game, you know, because of something that I said. And now to me, that was like the biggest thing. This is just one example of popular accessibility features coming from disabled gamers consulting with studios. People like Paul Amadeus Lane and organizations like Able Gamers and Can I Play That and Daggers all share their expertise with game developers. This is Morgan Baker, a game developer who went deaf during her teenage years and now consults with studios on how to make their games more accessible. So Morgan, when you're working with game developers and you kick down the door and you enter the room to give them <laughs> your advice, what, what are the first misconceptions you're trying to correct? That accessibility has to exist at the expense of the quality of the video game. So I think that's a common misconception. I can tell you right now, that's not true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is true? It can really actually even enhance and bring out the best of the game design when you make your games accessible. Plus also too, you have more people playing your game. I've never heard any developer anywhere say, oh gosh darn, I don't want anyone to play my video games. So when do you think accessibility in video games began? Well, I bet it's earlier than you think, because we have to go back 70 years to 1950. Meet Birdie the Brain, a 13-foot computer capable of playing tic-tac-toe. Joseph Cates designed the machine in 1950 to challenge visitors at a Canadian exhibition. If people couldn't beat Birdie, then Cates would just lower the difficulty, making it easier. Kind of like changing the difficulty in games today. Then, a decade after Birdie, Reg Malling invented the first patient-operated selector mechanism. That's the name of a sip-and-puff typewriter for those who are unable to use their hands. 
This new invention gave people multiple ways to use a typewriter. 25 years later, Nintendo used this technology in their own invention. You use a sip and pop, you basically have a tube and you blow and it mimics a B slack start using just a simple tube. And then it also has basically this chin strap that you put on your chin and you can move it around. And one of the earlier moments where a major company actually went out of their way to design for accessibility. As technology progressed, features such as subtitling, colorblind settings, and control remapping were all developed before being implemented into video games. In 2020, the Game Awards created the first ever Innovation and Accessibility Award. That year, the award went to the blockbuster hit The Last of Us Part II and actually got to talk to the developers about how they created this game by working with consultants. Uh, Alex Dianaki and I went to a, um, the accessibility conference and one of the, the people in the audience just raised his hand and, and, and was wondering, would it ever be possible for a game like Last of Us Part II to be accessible for the blind? At the time, I mean, the first thought in my head was no. And I was like, okay, well, let's talk about this. I mean, maybe. Once we got back to our studio, we actually reached out to Brandon again and brought him in as a consultant. Another one of the consultants that this team worked with was Morgan Baker. Um, disability is, it's a, it's a spectrum. So we needed to talk to a broad range of consultants to come in. I went in, I checked out their build. They brought me in to, you know, help with very specific uh, pain points that they ran into related to deaf and hard of hearing access. You know, we have a feature which is like an arrow on a subtitle and it tries to point to the direction of the speaker for, for, the, for the subtitle. We weren't sure, was this useful, was this good? But then Morgan was able to play it and tell us like, yes, th this is great. The advancement of video games like this shows that the accessibility movement is growing faster than ever. Also, fun fact, The Last of Us 2 is one of Carlos's favorite games, and he's already beaten it many, many times. Yes, The Last of Us Part 2. Oh my god, a game that I actually completed without any sighted assistance. But they, they didn't make it easy, right? They made it also where you can play it at the hardest difficulty. So like they didn't make it like uh, like they didn't make it easy, right? Like they, they made it to uh, like where everybody can play however however they want to play. Carlos, why do you think video games are such a big part of your life? I feel like playing games sort of made me feel like I was holding on to the other side of me that had vision in the past. Well, that's all the questions that I have for you, but I just want to say thanks for inviting me into your world of Mortal Kombat and metal music, and this was just really awesome. Thank you for having me today. I nah, you know, appreciate it. Oh, also, one more thing. Would you be interested in a rematch? <laughs> I'm down, we can do that. All right, let's do it. Let's do it, let's do it. I mean, I don't think I'll be able to touch you, but it is fun to even to get my ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh, I wanted me to do that. Oh. oh no, you're gonna have to edit that out.